Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in Junior English. We are in our My Perspectives volume on page 330, 331 and following. Sojourner's Truths, Ain't I a Woman? Now, I have made the argument a number of times with you guys that if you are not a patriot, one of the reasons, probably the major reason is, people in my generation haven't given you enough reason to be a patriot because you're not born a patriot, as we've said. You have to choose to be a patriot and part of your education I believe, is to give you reason to sit up and say, you know, I, I belong to an amazing nation that has a remarkable history. And what makes that such a remarkable history are the voices that so easily could be marginalized and never appreciated, and yet somehow those marginalized voices become incredible people to speak to us. Sojourner Truth is one of those. I mean, we think about Abraham Lincoln. I mean, think about how amazing it is that somebody like Lincoln, who starts out as a complete nobody, ends up being the president of the United States. America is special in that regards. Europeans had to come to respect that over time. And Sojourner Truth here is going to give us uh, some words that will have powerful resonances. Now, the second thing that we should point out is that this is not an authentic transcription of a speech that this woman gave, but rather it is remembered by somebody there. Now, in the end, we don't really care because it's going to be the heart, it's going to be the tenor, it's going to be the spirit of her comments that will be most provocative. Let's now turn, we'll do a little bit of uh, background reading, and then we'll get to the actual speech using uh, our professional reader. Ain't I a Woman, by Sojourner Truth, adapted by Francis Gage. Speech. Background. Sojourner Truth delivered her speech, titled, On Women's Rights, at the Women's Rights Convention in Akron, Ohio, in 1851. Francis Gage, an abolitionist, published this adapted version in 1863. Though Gage admitted she had given but a faint sketch of Truth's speech, her version served the cause of the suffrage movement of the time and has endured. It is by far the best known version of the speech. About the author. Sojourner Truth, born circa 1797, died circa 1883, was born into slavery in Swartkill, New York, as Isabella Bomfrey. In 1826, when one of her owners refused to honor his promise to free her, Bomfrey left with Sophia, her infant daughter. In 1843, she changed her name to Sojourner Truth and began her career as an abolitionist. Her memoirs were published in 1850, and she toured the country to promote not only abolitionism, but also equal civil rights for women. Page 331. Ain't I a Woman? By Sojourner Truth. Adapted by Francis Gage. Well, children... Where there is so much racket, there must be something out of kilter. I think that twixt the Negroes of the South and the women at the North, all talking about rights, the white men will be in a fix pretty soon. But what's all this here talking about? That man over there says that women need to be helped into carriages and lifted over ditches, and have the best place everywhere. Nobody ever helps me into carriages, or over mud puddles, or gives me any best place. And ain't I a woman? Look at me. Look at my arm. I have plowed and planted and gathered into barns, and no man could head me. And ain't I a woman? I could work as much and eat as much as a man when I could get it and bear the lash as well. And ain't I a woman? I have borne 13 children and seen them most all sold off to slavery. And when I cried out with my mother's grief, none but Jesus heard me. Page 332. And ain't I a woman? Then they talk about this thing in the head. What's this they call it? A member of the audience whispers, intellect. <sighs> That's it, honey. What's that got to do with women's rights or Negroes' rights? If my cup 
won't hold but a pint, and yours holds a quart. Wouldn't you be mean not to let me have my little half measure full? Then that little man in black there, he says women can't have as much rights as men because Christ wasn't a woman. Where did your Christ come from? Hmm? Where did your Christ come from? From God and a woman. Man had nothing to do with him. If the first woman God ever made was strong enough to turn the world upside down all alone, these women together ought to be able to turn it back and get it right side up again. And now they is asking to do it. The men better let them. Obliged to you for hearing me. And our old sojourner ain't got nothing more to say. Let's point out right away the... the power of this speech is not in the length of the speech, but rather in the force of the argument that she will make. Notice we begin with the idiom. Notice she'll begin by calling the audience children, and then later she'll reference one of the gentlemen as honey. This endearing kind of rhetoric, we should point out right away, is an attempt for her to kind of reach out and capture the audience as being genuine, authentic. Notice she'll use Americanisms, for lack of a better term. There is much racket there. Must be something out of kilter. I think that twixt as in between the Negroes of the South and the women of the North all talking about rights. The white, white men will be in a fix pretty soon. In other words, she's speaking to an audience that is going to understand that what she's saying is authentic by virtue of the power of her direct articulation. She doesn't use fancy language, any of that. Note the irony that she will play with all the way through this. Nobody ever helps me in the carriages and that this sets up what will then become the repetition, Ain't I a Woman, which is of course why the passage is called this. The tragedy, of course, of, Ray, of, of bearing 13 children and almost all of them being sold into slavery troubles her. Notice she will elicit from the audience the response of intellect. And it's going to be the challenge then that women have to define themselves as being worthy of voting rights by virtue of their intellect. And she will make this interesting word cup, uh, picture uh, regarding the cup. Some cups hold more than other cups, and yet all cups are of value. And then finally, she makes this profound theological argument that is in the end, of course, a political argument that if America is founded on a certain understanding of Christian theology, and therefore Christ is of some importance in that argument, then obviously where did Christ come from is a legitimate question, and she will use it powerfully. And then, of course, to finish almost abruptly that I've said what I need to say, and in the end, men better let women have their rights now that they're asking for it. It is a compelling uh, presentation. I want you to turn now to page 333, answer those questions, and we'll be ready to begin a real conversation of this text. Thank you.